we are going to talk about parallel axis theorem and we need to use parallel axis theorem so that we can use composite bodies to find inertia for simple geometric shapes and actually we can use this for non simple shapes too okay um, so very basically if I have X and Y and I have some sort of blob of area here that has a centroid C capital C located at a distance of DX here just for example, and dy here, okay, x prime, y prime, so I'm using primes because they're still parallel to the x and y axes, but they're not the x and y axes, so we need to distinguish them. So I added a prime there. So we will have moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia about the x prime axis plus the area times dy squared. Similarly, moment of inertia about the y axis is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia about the y prime axis plus area times dx squared. Okay, so we can find the inertias about any axis using our centroidal and adding the area times the distance we want to travel squared, okay? This distance between the two x-axes, okay, that's dy. That's why we're using those, okay? Um, and let's write out our terms where ix and iy are the moment of inertia. And that's moment of inertia about any axis. When we add this bar, I bar X prime and I bar Y prime. Okay, that bar is just like when we were doing um, finding centroids. We used X bar and Y bar because those are the distance to the, the center. Now, I didn't use X bar and Y bar on my picture here because I want it to be even more general distance Y and distance X. I can use any, any distance that I want. Okay, and they are the centroidal, very specific moment of inertia. And then we have D y and dx and this is I keep wanting to put equal sign our the perpendicular distance between axes of inertia okay so let's take this a step further with an example stick with my color scheme here given Okay, let's say that I have some x value here in millimeters and some y axis here in millimeters and I have some blob here of area that has a centroid located at I didn't do an X distance or a vertical distance. I just did an X one or I know what I'm thinking. I'm just not saying it right. Vertical distance for the X axis. There we go at 80 millimeters. Okay. I'm going to put this in blue. So this is my X prime axis and I'm going to put an X1 axis up here. Let's try that again. Eh. X1 
and x1 is an additional 30 up, so that's going to be 110 millimeters. Okay, moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to 30 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. My area is equal to 300 millimeters squared. Okay, so this is all my given. I'm given a blob with an inertia of 3,000 um, million millimeters to the fourth and an area of 300 millimeters squared. I have two axes. I have a centroidal axis X prime, at 80 millimeters, and another axis, X1, at 110 millimeters. I want to find the moment of inertia about the X1 axis, okay? Solution, I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem. where inertia is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia plus area dy squared. Okay, I can only move centroid, so I need to find the centroid first. Okay, so that means that my ix is 30 million is equal to I X prime bar. That's my centroid. That's my centroidal axis X prime. And then the I bar means it's the centroidal inertia plus area 300 millimeters squared times the distance I want to travel. Okay, so I'm sitting here. I'm already on the X and I want to move up to the X prime. So this is 80 millimeters for my dy, right? So this is going to be 80 millimeters quantity squared. Okay, so i x prime bar is equal to 28.08 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. Okay. Centroidal inertia is always going to be the smallest inertia, which makes sense if we're talking about moments. The longer the moment arm, dy, the bigger the moment, right? So same thing here. Okay, now that I have the centroidal, I can move to I x1, which is going to be my centroidal, 28.08 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth plus my area, 300 millimeters squared. And then the distance I want to travel again, so I'm at the centroid and I want to move up here to this red line. So this is going to be 30 millimeters. Okay, that's the perpendicular distance, millimeters. So I'm going to come down here, 30 millimeters quantity squared, and I x1 will be 28.4 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. Okay, and I'm going to do this in red because it's wrong. Can you go from Ix directly to Ix1? Question mark. No, no, you cannot. Okay, uh, the theorem only works if you're moving that centroidal bit. Okay, you have to start from the center and move. Okay, you end up with uh, 33.6 if you try to go from X to X1, and it's wrong. Okay, so you must go through the centroid. No cheating, no shortcuts.